Well, this is a little bit awkward, but <laughs> hello. Welcome back to the aisle. Originally, this video was supposed to be a legacy modded video. I came across an actual modded server with a bunch of really cool custom stuff. I was excited to show you. What is that thing, man? That got me out of nowhere. Oh God, this looks disgusting. So disturbing. Oh, oh okay. However, a lot has happened since then. Yeah, we're gonna be talking about that in just a second. And the Rex, <laughs> and humans, and humans with their loadouts, and a bunch of other cool stuff. Then we're gonna be hearing from Dondi throughout the video and his thoughts on the progression of the game, and I didn't think any of this was gonna happen. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's jump into this, I guess. There's a lot. So we're just gonna jump right into the meat of the meat and potatoes, starting with the Hyper Carno. I, the Type H Carno. Uh, I didn't expect to see this in UE5 or Everima anytime in the next year, in all honesty. Uh, and there's two reasons for that. Reason one, it's it's a hyper and the game is nowhere near ready for them, uh, but it really does <laughs> stand up to the test of time and it, it aged very well. It looks great. But the second is that uh, I was, <laughs> I data mined about a month and a half back and I found out, and this was a big oopsie, this wasn't supposed to be in the files to my knowledge, and I didn't tell anyone about it because I was asked not to. Apparently there's nothing happening with them right now, but I was also told, you know, it wasn't supposed to be in there or shown to anyone, so I don't know if I believe that there's nothing happening with them, in all honesty. But, anyways, here's Dondi. Yes. There is the existence of this asset still, so if you're curious how well this holds up to the, uh, actual, you know, the actual graphics. I think he still fits. So. He's definitely a little monster. So the Hypercarno is a, <laughs> a real treat to see in UE5. Honestly, I don't really believe them that they're not doing anything with it either. And now we're moving into the Rex. And <laughs> let me tell you, I've been around the block for a while and I'm pretty sure I can confidently say more money has gone into the development of the Rex and iterations of its model and its animation changes and its sounds than like a new Ferrari or like a, even a house. This damn thing is expensive. Anyways, here is the new set of animations for the Rex on the broadcast. Look at him, he's just a little guy. This stuff is still in development, by the way, so it's not finished or polished, and it's subject to change, just so you know. So we've got our old T-Rex broadcast here, right? This is the old kind of straightforward roar. And then we have the, uh, the newer one where he steps out and gives a proper broadcast pose, stance, roar. It's a great time. I was very, very happy when I saw this. I was like, ugh. Ugh. He's so mad. He's so angry. <laughs> He's so mad. <laughs> Did not make that one. Well, who are we crediting with this lovely roar? So I can really appreciate that they're updating old assets as well and giving them full body animations. I know that was a hot topic a couple years ago and they wanted to do that with some of the old assets and it looks like they're following through and putting a lot of money down to make this happen. I'm I'm really happy to see this. Yeah, no, it has no sound. I'm not I'm not playing a vocal Rex roar constantly over and over and over. Who wants that? No one. That's who. I, hang on now, because I I would have liked to hear it over and over and over. I like the sound of the Rex call, and I'm sure many other people do as well. So don't go making those assumptions, Dwandy. Anyways, <laughs> this low quality footage you're seeing right here, sorry by the way, is the Dryo, and there is a little bit of stuff happening with that. I'm not a fan of the Dryo. I don't really care about it, but some of you might be interested to see the the tail whip and the kick and stuff. Here you go. Yeah. Dryo, dryo kick. Hey and then of course there's the yeah. And then the 
you know, yeah. Although he does currently move. It is a tail attack, but you don't see it because he's, he's real finding himself like every other dinosaur. The tail whip, he won't, he won't turn. So this is going to be a little bit controversial now because I know a lot of people are against it and a lot of people are for it, but we're going to be talking about humans and their high velocity lovemakers. And then Dondi will be talking about it as well. Everybody is doing something to get a competitive edge. Why shouldn't you? This is Backbone, and Backbone is your final destination in the mobile gaming world. The goal is to take the world's most popular games and convert them into a premium handheld experience on your mobile device. The Backbone One controller conveniently snaps onto your iPhone or Android phone, allowing you to play anywhere. And honestly, I can already see this thing giving you huge advantages in App Store games like Call of Duty Mobile, Diablo Immortal, Genshin, and more. And Backbone literally lets you play your Xbox, PlayStation, and PC games through your mobile using remote play. Its intuitive design meets the needs of gamers, sporting a head jack or use your Bluetooth headphones. It even lets you charge your phone while you play with pass-through charging. You can even push your experience to the next level using the wildly popular Backbone app. It's your central hub putting everything you need in one easy-to-use app, transforming your phone seamlessly into a handheld gaming powerhouse. It even lets you edit clips of your gameplay. So what are you waiting for? Get your own Backbone at playbackbone.com or use the link in the description below. And a huge thank you to Backbone for sponsoring this video. I'll just comment my thoughts and if I notice anything cool, I'll just, you know, talk about it and then we'll go back to Dondi obviously, but uh, I for one am excited to see humans. I would like to see humans in the game. And I like the idea of it because they will give you the option to have humans on your servers. If you don't, well then don't have them. If you like them, well then have them, and it'd be pretty cool. And obviously the elephant in the room, if you add humans to this game, it's gonna open the game to a much larger audience. We will see a lot more people on the aisle because it's not just play as a dinosaur, it's play as a human and survive the dinosaurs if you can. It'd be like a better looking arc, basically. hey -ya. So I'm going to assume that this is the revolver that was teased in one of the devlogs. Um, it looks a little bit weird. Just love <laughs> he holds the gun like Rick from The Walking Dead. That's how he holds the revolver with the little broken, like he aims it downward. Oh <laughs> Coral. Get out there and save Coral. Coral. Coral! It, no, <laughs> his vein, yeah. His, his veins are... His veins are not doing great in the shader at the moment. So I know you're probably waiting for him to shoot. It's kind of lackluster. Yeah. It's kind of just random firing. This is it. This is just really what you need to kind of set forward. Can you shoot at the dinosaur? But we need to have iron sights set up because it's just coming from like the random recoil and a muzzle at the moment. So years ago, I played as a mercenary and used one of the weapons that they had in the game. Oh god, what a treat. And it looks like they've entirely scrapped the firing system that they had back then, and are making something completely different and custom now, which is <laughs> very welcome. God, there's something so uncomfortable about, like, just being at this level. Like, if I spawned on a beach in this, I would just kind of be like, nah, I'm good. I don't want to go in there. Just at all. Good lord. That looks like pain. So this is a little bit important for the context of humans and their survivability and the gunplay and I guess just how hard it's going to be to survive as a human. Uh, <laughs> he bases this around DayZ and playing on like really hard settings because he's trying to brush up on his skills to then also be able to create, I don't know, a enjoyable but hard experience within the aisle too that's adequate to the difficulty that you would expect. Um, and he goes into detail about the weapon system too, and like individual bullets and mags and stuff. So just give this, give this a check. What are you playing? I was like Daisy. She goes, oh, why? Uh, <laughs> it's like first off, fair question. Uh, second off, uh, I'm playing it where it's a lot harder than it was originally intended because I have to be able to play better than the average aisle player who's gonna go in and be like, humans are too tough. Wah. And I have to be able to, you know. I have to be able to talk a big game and be like, no, I can survive, and if I can survive, you can survive. And if you can't survive, you got to just play until you don't have that skill issue anymore. And uh, some of the more hardcore DayZ mods are perfect for that. They really, really are. 
So we're going to move into territory now, talking about the ammo for said uh, high-velocity lovemakers <laughs> and how that system is going to work. And I really like how the system is playing out so far, at least the way that they're describing it. If everyone f 9 for fun, I would be impressed because the problem isn't finding the gun. It's finding the gun plus the ammo plus the mag. Like, that's what you need for, for gun competency in this game. Like, you need those three things for the gun to be truly fun. Like, don't get me wrong, you could load in a single, uh, a single bullet, but, like, if you're just running around, like, with a, a 9 mil and you've got, like, let's say, a bunch of bullets but no magazine and you're sitting there loading it in one at a time, and... I was gonna say, if, if you don't have, like, an auto-loader or a, like, a reloader, like... I feel like having a revolver is, like, the worst thing you could pick out there. I mean... I... I disagree. Only because... I don't find the concept of aim gun... Look down sights and shoot target as particularly difficult. Um, so, for me, I would choose the revolver because, I mean... We named it the Basilisk for a reason. Aim at target, pull trigger, turn to stone. Like, <laughs> it's... I'd rather have a revolver than a pistol. 100% every time. So coming up here in a little bit, we're going to have a conversation about dinosaurs and mutations and uh, I think thermal or IR vision or something like that. Um, but I wanted to say that, one, humans seem like they're pretty good when they prone. You know, kind of hard to see. And two, I'd like to see ghillie suits. I'd like to see ghillie suits added so we can use those and hide in trees. And then if they have a mutation that lets you see like heat or thermals, you kind of in trouble. But, you know, you get what I mean. That's asking, yeah, it's asking for trample damage, but like, look, if I have the choice between, uh oh, I hear a big dinosaur, I'm gonna run into some bushes and lay down, or just I'm gonna stand out in the open where it's definitely gonna eat me, I'm gonna risk the trample damage. Yeah, no, dude, first person is just like such a tactical nightmare. It really is. Now remember, the age old wilderness survival tactic you don't have to outrun the dinosaur, just your friend. God, no, don't add trample damage. Oh, buddy, I have some bad news for you if that's how you feel. <laughs> Look, I, I could put a T-Rex with its crouch animation on the other side of these bushes, and you literally cannot see him. Like, 100%, you cannot see him. Yeah, you, you just now realized all of the trees are prime Herrera real estate. It's almost like they were planned. So now we're going to move into something that's very, very impressive, and it's the Rex and how easily it can stalk you. Here, hold on. I think the Rex still has the box around him, but for the sake of example, we'll just... Yeah, let's see. Oh yeah, he doesn't have sounds unless he's running, right? Yeah, he doesn't have anything set up really. Uh, let me... This is a huge Tyrannosaur, by the way. Like, absolutely huge. Yeah, so if we use this... Right, we go here, lead out, uh, F8, F11, let's just poke the big boy through the bushes here, he's even floating a smidgen, yeah, alright, sick. So this is gonna be entirely terror inducing, it's insane. Let's play hide the tyrannosaur, where is he? Where is Mr. T-Rex on the other side of these bushes, five feet away? It's literally disappeared. You can't see it. Clear sky, middle of the day. Where is the Tyrannosaur? You can be a human and have a T-Rex right next to you, not even realize it. But it even, it, it's even worse, okay? Here, okay, listen, listen to this. It's worse. So again, I cannot stress this enough to everybody here. What a tactical nightmare. What an absolute tactical nightmare. <laughs> okay, that wasn't it. I lied. But what's coming up is really important because it's it's insane. And and for the sake of argument, because I've always said this about the dinosaurs and their need for third person. With the exception of the trees I just deleted because the T-Rex has debug tree deletion on him. Um you can see over this. 
You can very thoroughly see over this. A person cannot. At all. <laughs> like, so. Yeah, that's pretty insane. They can see you, you can't see them. Oh, it's definitely shot placement. Shot placement really matters. So. Yes, night vision goggles are a thing. Um, we have two, t two styles planned. Um, the first one, I, ah, God, I can't remember the name, names of them without the sheet in front of me, but it's a, uh, I guess what you call a single optic. Like it's something you would hold in your hand and you lift up and it just goes up to one eye and you can basically zoom in with it. Um, but it's a single piece of night vision. Um, and then of course we'll have attachables that go to the helmet. So, and then of course those are, those will go over both eyes. They have a, a wonderful IR light that will emit from them. Probably going to put something in for dinosaurs as a mutation so that they can see IR light. So humans who think they're being super sneaky and stealthy in the dark are uh, going to have a bad time against man-eating dinosaurs that are specifically geared to hunt them. But anyway. So the long short of that is you will never truly really be safe. There will always be a way for a dinosaur to see you. Maybe increase the odds in your favor, but... I still don't understand. How are we in 2023 and people still think that it just... I'm going to go around with a gun and delete all the dinosaurs. No, you, you can't even see him on the other side of this. Oh, God. I wish I was listened to about things inside of the game as if I knew what was going on sometimes. It just saved me so much time. So we're getting ready to gear up and move on to another segment now. This is almost done. There is a little bit of important information about the Trudon and the Dilo and the Venom because apparently some people aren't happy about it and it's being changed. There is certain parts of the Trudon's Venom that I am not happy with. There are also certain parts to the Envenomation effect that were coming in with the Dilo and certain effects will be altered and then applied to the Trudon. So that is what I mean when I put in Venom finalization. So this clip starts out a little bit slow and a little bit boring, but it does ramp up. It has a bit of information about the Maya, and then it moves in to talk about the next apex, the next creature that'll be able to tussle with the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Don't get it twisted. The Maya is not far along in development. It just has assets that are ready, so... It's it closer than the other one. Yes, it's closer than the other one. And even so, he's not set up properly. It doesn't work. Like, the, the arms and stuff, you see, they're just a little shattered. So it's not it's not like that. You know, the Maya is just existing for its uh, assets. Uh, I can tell you that as it stands currently, there is definitely, other than the Triceratops, another predatory apex in the next update of assets in development the next dna list you see will have something that can that can tussle the tyrannosaur that can go around and throw its weight and be like hey buddy what the fuck are you doing over here so there is that so i know the giganotosaurus is planned but i would bet money that it's the spino so there was an entire section about thermals and the flyers that are in the island itself but there's not really too much that's given other than you have thermals, they're marked with the temporary candle flame that you see there, they're changing that. The thermals will never be seen by anything on the land, it's only exclusive to the creatures that will fly or get around on the map. And apparently you can get around basically the entire map uh, without burning much of your stamina, it takes about four and a half minutes to get it back once you've used it. Stop holding W, stop sprinting everywhere in the air, and you won't burn your stamina as much. So we're gonna move into, um, I guess, there were some complaints that, like, you know, people thought it was dumb that they were working on humans before the dinosaurs were done, basically, and, and it didn't really make sense. It makes sense to me, in all honesty, because, I mean, it's not difficult to make human stuff work, because it already exists, and they explain this, and we're also gonna explore the idea of the Utah bringing down larger creatures than, uh, before. Well, their, their base structure exists, so it's not hard. Um, we're not doing anything that's going to be excessive anymore when it comes to the animals. Like, there's burrowing and uh, I think, like, two other things that are major for the animals. And then, like, every dinosaur you see after that, in some way, shape, or form, will have shades of another type of dinosaur's play style and functionality, you know, like this guy. He pounces. There's going to be other dinosaurs that do that. There are going to be other dinosaurs that can grab onto 
even other dinosaurs, and then drag them to the ground and kill them, which is basically what this guy does. It's a different set of animations. You, you obviously want to give them a flair, their own sounds, so they sound different, but generally speaking, that's what they do. Um, but, like, humans, you can just kind of go, all right, well, when we work on humans, insert, like, every survival formula here that does the same thing. It's it's pretty much set. It, you loot and scoot. No, dinosaurs, there's no blueprint on getting them right, and of course they're going to take the longest time. Like, we built them one time, didn't like it, and I mean that in the sense of, like, the, the legacy version of the game. It didn't work out. It very clearly didn't work out, and anyone who wants to tell you that legacy is better in terms of gameplay is just flat delusional. There is no, there is no argument for it, because there is no interactivity in the legacy version of the game. And if you wish to die on that hill, well, we will forget you and you will not be mourned. But after the more complicated, you know, like, you get climbing done, okay, cool, other dinosaurs can climb, this general functionality is finished. Ooh, what do you got for humans that do stuff like this? There's not. And we do not have any blueprints to pull from. I can't just go, hey, what dinosaur game has done this thing and done it well? Because the answer is non-existent. There are very few dinosaur games you can even look at to pull even the slightest bit of inspiration from, because they just aren't great. Like, the dinosaur... The dinosaur category inside of games is grossly underrepresented. So I know there's going to be a lot of people that are maybe even upset uh, over the uh, the dinosaur genre um, statement and stuff, but you know, on its surface, the Isle is its own game, and the other dinosaur games that are in the same genre but kind of like spin off a little bit, um, you know, they're their own series as well. Like there are games that are like MMORPGs for dinosaurs, uh, and then you have like a game like Ark where it's humans and dinosaurs taming and stuff. But the Isle is. The anomaly, it's completely different. Anyways, <laughs> listen to this. So these are like the small things, like all the, the millions of little things that go wrong when you add something and it's just, ugh. All right, so he looks up and when your dinosaur looks up, obviously your head turns up. But in the case of this, when you need to look up in order to travel, now our Herrerasaurus looks directly backwards. So you have to fix the small things like that. Like, oh, the stuff that normally works on animals, like, oh, you've introduced something new, it's going to break a lot of things. You have to have this permanent state alteration of how your dinosaur looks around now. But on the bright side, we get to, we get to do it once and then it's finished. And that right there is everything I have to show you on Everima and the uh, the content that they're working on. I didn't expect to see the Type H Carno. I didn't expect to see the Rex and uh, its animation and a lot of other stuff. I'm kind of thoroughly pleased actually. Uh, the rest of this, I'm just gonna skim through it real quick. He talked about how they made a, a lobby system where you would, it, would, it was kind of like DMZ or like, um, you know, Warzone where you would jump into an active world and you know, you'd have to go in as a squad if you were a human, but there were already dinosaurs in, but they wanted to keep Sandbox. Uh, and he doesn't want to make the Isle a AAA studio game um, because it would just be too hectic. They want to stay where they are right now, which kind of saddens me because they have the talent to do it. They're making some really high quality stuff. It just takes a long time to do it. Uh, but the stuff they're putting out is pretty good in all honesty. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section as always. And I will see you in the next one.